that was really hard to say, by the way. It was T P P P P tape. Yeah. yeah. That's really try hard. Try it sometime. Go after as much <laughs> as I had to drink today. You go right ahead and try that. <laughs> I heard uh, you had a bottle the size of a Buick. Or I you deserved need, one. Is that it? I certainly need one after uh, <laughs> after today. Yeah. I, I keep waking up in a stranger world than the one I went to bed in. And uh, this morning, I'll just give you a quick in passing, and then we'll move on to where the good Lord split you. Uh, they're holding a special on just firing everybody cakes. Yeah, um, or, or everybody kinda... running away because uh, does Paul Ryan get a cake? I didn't think so. Uh, everybody gets a cake, honey. <laughs> everybody gets a cake. Um, I woke up this morning uh, to uh, Joe Scarborough uh, using language I haven't heard since Drift Glass used it in nineteen in two thousand and six. Yeah. Um, uh, going after his friend Newt Gingrich for being a scurrilous bastard, uh, which he apparently just discovered this morning. Wow. Um, and then we pivot. Uh, for support that these unreconstructed scumbags should never be allowed TV time to Bill Crystal, what do you think? Wow! And I just went. I'm obviously I'm hallucinating really hard, or I hit my head really hard, but I'm pretty sure what I need is an absolutely um, a boat-sized bottle of something. Then I read the New York Times, and <laughs> and, and my... thank you to the 450 people who sent <laughs> drift glass. The uh, link to David Dude. Brooks's column this morning. Dude, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll just I'll tell you. We'll get this out of the way because I don't want to talk about David Brooks all day today. Um, just the first half hour. Hey, that's what I do. <laughs> uh, David Brooks. Um, I, I make mock of uh, Mr. Brooks of the New York Times because Mr. Brooks of the New York Times lies. He is, in fact, I, in my opinion, the most dangerous, most, most toxic pundit columnist in America. Um, and I, I have very good reason to believe that, but he, he's been, he sells the same three columns over and over again. He's been, he's been paid to write the same tripe, literally almost word for word. Uh, both sides do it. The, the revolution is on the way. There's a Republican hero just around the corner uh, over and over again, almost in a, a, an algorithm. Well, uh, and just, also don't, don't forget the one about we need to be humble and bipartisan yes. and work together in peace. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's always when it, as soon as the, the Republican Party is on the rise, he jumps on board. As soon as they collapse, he decides that we, everybody needs to get along and everyone should stop judging people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we should all just let's make sure we don't judge anybody or point fingers anyone who was wrong about everything. Mm -hmm. So David Brooks has been has been functionally wrong about everything his entire adult fucking life. And he keeps getting paid a shit ton of money by a whole bunch of different media out outlets to write the same fucking column over and over again for the last 20 years. And that to me is, is the single greatest mystery in our media. Why is it this guy is untouchable? Why can nobody but a few David Brooks critics out there ever be allowed to say a, a mumbling word against him? Why is he invited on shows and treated like everyone's wise uncle who just returned from Tibet with secret wisdom to impart to them when it's the same fucking thing he said last time and the time before and the time before that. So one of the genres, subgenres that I mock him about is the coming conservative revolution. Uh, <laughs> that there's a renaissance, there's a fucking conservative renaissance right around the corner. And in this, in today I just, I went back to 1999 when he was saying, if, if George Bush and John McCain can meld their two ideologies together. It provides a fresh new look for the Republican Party that's really going to take this country by storm. That was 1999. That was 20 fucking years ago. Then I jumped forward to 2014 where he said, you know, uh, the, the great triumph of the midterm election is the Republicans detoxifying their brain. <laughs> yeah, under Sarah Palin, things were going bad, but things have gotten so much better now. Right around the corner, the Republican Party is going to turn that fucking corner. And then, of course, Donald Trump comes down the escalator. Yep. And we all have to pretend that nothing David Brooks ever wrote existed. Mm -hmm. And that's where his colleagues come in. His colleagues are all very good about never, ever mentioning the shit David Brooks wrote last week, ever. Right. So what's the title of today's David Brooks column? The Conservative Renaissance. It's a renaissance, your class. Yes. Sure, okay. it's a bad time, but there's all these brilliant conservative thinkers who are bursting out of the scene, Blue Gal. <laughs> and who will lead them? Who is their leader? Who's the vanguard? Who's the field marshal of David Brooks's revolution? Well, I think he's known in the liberal blogosphere as Doey Pantload. Yes, and has been known that way. The uh, the proud author author of the book Liberal Fascism, mm -hmm. uh, who proudly blocks me on Twitter because I pointed out repeatedly to his face that he uh, is a really wretched scumbag who who says horrible, terrible, filthy, lying things, and and 
all over the place all the time. Uh, Jonah Goldberg yep. uh, is going to lead uh, the revolution, this this conservative renaissance. The only person I can think of who would be worse than Jonah Goldberg yeah. for his mm-hmm. renaissance would be Dinesh D'Souza. Yeah, well, but otherwise, this is the worst you can get. Yeah, I have a feeling this column had been written two weeks ago, and oh, instead, sure, but yeah. it, was, it was Kevin Williamson. <laughs> and then he had to go. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Uh, whose name can I pull out of my ass to pretend that there's actual thinkers on the right? Hey, what about that Jonah Goldberg fellow? He's got a new book coming out. It's going to be great. Um, and it reminded me, Blue Gal, and now I'll get off the subject of what um, Robert Redford, when he was, he played a guy named Hooker uh-huh. in, in The Sting. Yeah. Said, said to Loretta Sorrento when he was picking her up at the diner and he showed up at her door. Uh-huh. And he, and he uh-huh. said, you know me, I'm just like you. It's two in the morning and I don't know nobody. I don't know nobody. And she yep. lets him into her room. There's nobody left on the right. There's nobody. Yep. There are no thinkers. There's nobody even who can pretend to put put two sentences together and come up with a new thought. The entire conservative movement has been hollowed out and shown to be the racist farce we on the left have always said it is, except that conservative farce is David Brooks' meal ticket. So yep. he need, he has to keep pretending every few months for the last 20 years that despite what you might have seen over the last six months, we're turning the corner, people. Yeah, and yeah. that that he's free to write that column to the end of time, and I'm sure he will. Again, the enduring mystery is why, why, why the New York Times keeps putting money in this asshole's pocket. Why is he taken seriously anywhere? And that I don't know. One day I'll find out. I, I have friends in New York who travel in circles who do tell me that he is taken very seriously by very, very rich, inbred idiots in New York City. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that doesn't surprise me because that's the fairy tale they want to believe. Right. But I cannot understand how after all this time anyone continues to give him money, a lot of money, more money than you and I will ever see, Blue Gal, yep. to, to trial out the same lie over and over again over such a long period of time. Yep. And that ends our David Brooks moment. <laughs> so, what you want to... But I think, I think you said something really important about republicanism. Yes. I try to. Uh because speaking of conservative bloggers, Eric Erickson, mm-hmm. uh, rabid goat fucker yeah. that, you know, yeah, he he, he's the one. And and just for historical context, for those who are too young to remember, oh, kids. the reason we bring up goat fucking with Eric Erickson has nothing to do with calling him particularly a goat fucker. Although, you know. He, he used that term when David Souter retired from the Supreme Court right. and called him a goat fucking child molester yes. uh as as he retired as david Souter retired from the court mm-hmm. not because david Souter had done something specific on that day that eric erickson disagreed with uh it was just on his way out and retiring mm-hmm. i'm gonna call him that yeah so uh and that that tweet that he where he said that is still on twitter so yeah. uh good for him not well, deleting it and just by way of um, that, I will just mention that Andrew Sullivan today is is bitching about campus speech codes. Of course. Again? Again. Because there's no <laughs> other problem on earth. I mean, he, he talks right. about other things. But th- these 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 conservative movement dead-enders who have mm-hmm. nothing else in their life, who, who've, who've bet the farm on this movement being their, their ticket to greatness, and it died on them. Yep. It turned out to be every bit the racist farce we said it was. They have nothing left. They have no place to go. There's nobody on the left who wants them. Um, there are a bunch of people on the left who are who are who I who are ill advised to let them into their camp. Although you and I had this discussion, and uh, when Joe Scarborough's ex, you know excoriating Newt Gingrich and talking about the Bush tax cuts and what a terrible idea they were, I was there, blue gal. I was there back in the day, back in 2005. I wrote a book and I said, oh, what a terrible idea this was. I but of course it's always I attack both sides. You know mm-hmm. when Barack Obama's Rama talked about him and blah, 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 blah. No, the, the, the entry, the um, shibboleth, if you will, to get into our movement, to get into our boat is the left was right about the right all along. That's all you need to do is admit that publicly and then atone for helping to create the monster machine that has made you rich and made, given you a job your entire life. You have to do those two things. If you don't, you're just another fucking tea partier. You're just another Republican scoundrel who doesn't want to pay the bill 
mm-hmm. for the mess you made. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think the as- one person I have seen come even remotely close to doing that to actually mm-hmm. where I'll go, okay, let's talk about you getting in the lifeboat with us right. is Nicole Wallace. Yes, I will go uh, Richard Trainer. And Richard Painter. Nicole Wallace this week called herself a recovering Republican. She admitted that she didn't vote for McCain Palin on the air, which you got to admit. Yeah. After having taken a paycheck from that campaign to say, no, I didn't vote for them because I don't think she was qualified, uh, is brave. Eric Erickson uh, got a lot of attention over at his blog uh, because he spoke with an anonymous Republican congressman who uh, Wonkette is absolutely convinced was Peter King. Uh, I'm not sure that's true, but that's who they think it was. Uh, And what this uh, congressman in the grocery store said was, uh, I say a lot of shit, I'm quoting him, I say a lot of shit on TV defending him, Donald Trump, even over this, but honestly, I wish the motherfucker would just go away. We're going to lose the House, lose the Senate, and lose a bunch of states because of him. Mm-hmm. All his supporters will blame us for what we have or have not done, but he hasn't led. He wakes up in the morning, shits all over Twitter, shits all over us, shits all over his staff, and then hit, hits golf balls. Fuck him. Of course, I can't say that in public right. or I'd get run out of town. If you're lucky. And this is where this is where I well, but this is where I turned into drip glass. Right. Because and I have learned from you, dear. Well, I've learned from you, dear. Which is Run out of town by whom? Right. (laughs) Fox News, your brainwashed base. Right. uh, You know, your obviously equally disgusted colleagues who are equally cowardly to you. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And and then I said, and this is where I think you, I'm just adding to what you've said about how hollow the Republican Party is. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not Trump that's making them lose their seats. No, it's not. And it's really important that we remember this. This is where we can easily fall into the trap of Trumpism. I detest Donald Trump with with every every fiber of my being. But you will notice if you watch individual House races that the people running on the Democratic side for the House of Representatives are running on health care. Yes, they are running on health care and gun and reducing gun violence. Mm -hmm. And so it is not Trump that's making them lose people lose their seats. It's the war on health insurance. It's the Mm -hmm. war on women. It's a war on brown people. It's slavery to the gun lobby. And, you know, it unfortunately, it took Republicans having, you know, won everything, including the White House to wake some people up and say, oh, wait a minute, Republican policies are going to hurt me. Yes. You know, this is terrible. I'm I'm going to lose my health insurance because there are three brand. There's the House, the Senate and the White House now have the ability to do what they've been promising to do all along. Mm-hmm. And so I I think that they are victims of their success at cheating yeah. <laughs> and uh, winning elections based on closet racism and now the uh this trumpism thing yeah that the i i showed you i tweeted yeah. the it's picture hard. i have an ability to uh, as part of my work at crooks and liars to track uses of terms on television yes i am tracking at the moment the the term both sides which is really not a good thing to track because um Every commercial, every sports station where they're talking about two teams will pick up that term, both sides. You know, that that's not that's a generic statement. But I'm also searching for the term Trumpism, which is not a generic word. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Mm-hmm. And generally speaking, uh, it's like an outbreak, like a rash. You know, it, it toddles along with. Sometimes you'll see nine instances in a day. And this is across all cable news, as well as many, many um, local affiliates. So I'm search. I'm really searching a broad base of television stations. And so you'll see seven or nine or four or whatever references to Trumpism. And I always go and look at them. Oh, and it also traces some radio stations. So if somebody on NPR says Trumpism, um, you'll actually see a lot 
that that number will go way up because it's run several times during the day on different NPR stations. So those instances will be counted individually. But uh, the day Paul Ryan resigned, it was 146. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> References to Trumpism. Right. And it is people like Chuck Todd who said it multiple times oh, it in the was opening a, of his show. It was a master class in not talking about the nature of the Republican Party. Right, right. Absolutely. Because they would talk about Ron being Johnson on. Yep. The day he tells the truth is the day he is run out of town. Yep, yep. And and all of the people that he depends upon in his phone, Rolod- we call it Rolodex, but, you know, of course it's a cell phone, but the, the Rolodex he has of Republican congressmen, he got Ron Johnson on to talk about, Oh, you know, bipartisanship, and we really need to work together. Uh huh. <laughs> but what about Trumpism? Because right. is Trumpism taking over the soul of the Republican Party? If so, if those, and, Wait and a minute. I, Who I, elected I, Donald Trump? Right. What, I, well, I, what primaries did you sh- cover in right. 2016? I don't. The, uh, I don't get it. That. And what did I say last night, Drift Bus? I'm not trying to interrupt you, but no, no, you you, you said a great. I wanted many David things. Brooks, uh-huh. and and who was the other conservative? I said should be in in the um, hunt. Oh yes, hunt. It, it was Bill Crystal. Bill Crystal yeah. and David Brooks uh-huh. should should be put on, in, out in the middle of a field with whatever weapons they have at hand, mm-hmm. along with the. Donald Trump for president, fuck your feelings, t-shirt wearers, right? right? <laughs> and, and then suddenly, let's see who survives, right? It, then it's the arena, Star Trek episode. Right. Da, 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 da. And you know what? I really don't care who wins because we're all winners. We're, we're all, all winners, winners in that universe. And, and, but, but you said something really important too, which is it took the Republicans winning the House and the Senate and the White House yeah, for for their base to wake up to the fact that oh shit they're they're coming they're screwing us and, they're yeah. fucking us over now remember in two thousand five that was true too exactly yeah. these people are well in- not just Republicans I low information voters in right. general right you know but my my yeah. point being the the people who vote Republicans yeah. are incapable of learning they mm. cannot be they cannot be taught the people whose job it is to lie to the public. And say it's always both sides and the American people this and the American people that. What do the American people want? I don't know. Cannot, cannot. Their their business model, their psychological makeup, their financial future is dependent on lying about the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. And they Mm -hmm. will not change. It it doesn't matter if you belt them in the head with a two by four. It doesn't matter. They, They are functionally incapable of changing. What we can do, however, is we can change. We can learn from the fact that Shit, we want all the. This is the same Republican Party who elected and reelected George Bush and mm-hmm. cheered him on right up until everything went south. Then they all put on funny hats, said, We never heard of George Bush. George Bush, who? Bushes and Bushes was a terrible idea. Why can't we get back to real Republicanism? It's a fucking rerun. And yeah. we've been here before. And and they've even they've even thrown in Scooter Libby as a bonus in case anybody forgot what the Bush yeah. administration looked like. Yeah, I and, sent I sent a meanie tweet to Liz Cheney. Who I was just, saw that. Head over heels happy that yes. finally there's justice for Scooter Libby. Yeah, justice okay. for Scooter. Just, but it's time. This time we need to find the place in the mechanism to shove the monkey wrench. Yep. Because because they are gearing up. I swear to God. I swear to God. The the future political debate spectrum is going to be Bill Crystal on one side, mm-hmm. uh, Jonah Goldberg on the other, and Joe Scarborough in the middle. Mm-hmm. That's the plan. And liberals will cease to exist. We will be erased from history. And it doesn't matter what we say, what we do, how right we are, how wrong we are. Our critiques will be lost uh, unless we make their lives incredibly uncomfortable, mm-hmm. unless we make their lives unbearable, unless we make it clear that we trademarked this shit 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that yeah. you're stealing, you are appropriating our critique and our language, you're ripping us off and casting us aside is fucking unacceptable. Well, and and, and and I think, too, we have to make sure that these cable news networks realize it can't just be a show and therefore you need both sides to be equally bad right. or yep. equally good because the Repub- Republicans have no policies. They have poll testing. I mean, this is the other thing that that 
you really need to remember about Trump is yeah. build the wall and drain the swamp aren't his policies. No. Cambridge Analytica gave him those three word lines as something mm -hmm. that poll tested well. Yeah. He even said on the podium, you know, drain the swamp. I didn't like it, but people like it. People love this stuff. What am I going to do? Oh, so, yeah. What am I going to do? I guess people like that drain the swamp thing. So we're going to use it. I didn't like it, but yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And and people on cable news are so wedded to the idea of we have to make sure that both sides are equally, that this horse race mm -hmm. and this and and this is why Trump won. Was there was such a sense of even up to the last minute? Remember Joe Scarborough screaming? Oh yeah, at Brian Williams yeah. because his pet Mark Halperin had yeah. suggested that Trump could win. Yeah, yeah, no, and this was, right up until the you're absolutely right. Right up until the very last minute when when the car went off the cliff. Yeah, everyone was just scoring points off of Hillary Clinton because it didn't matter. It didn't matter. And it, and that includes James Comey, too. Yeah. We can yeah. get rich. I can make my name. I can make my bones. You know, kicking the shit using Hillary Clinton as a pinata because that's what we've been doing for the last 20 years. And she's going to win. It's inevitable. Yeah. So we can yeah. use, she's an inexhaustible supply of hate and rage that we can we can leech off of, that we can just pound her ass and, and she can take it and she's going to be president anyway. So what does it matter? And once she's in, it's going to be a great show because she'll never get anything done, which we like. Uh, yeah. Republicans will run impeachment hearing after impeachment hearing. It'll be Benghazi 24-7. Our ratings will be great. Um, the country can go do what the fuck the country does. Who really cares? But that's what the future looks like. It's going to be a yeah. wonderful cable news show forever. And Donald Trump will be off on Fox News getting rich, hiring us because right. he'll be a martyr. He'll, right. he'll be on. You know, it'll be the three stigmata of Donald Trump every fucking yeah. day. He'll go on. That was the plan. Yeah, that, that was, was the plan. plan. And everyone was in on it. They didn't tell us about it because, you know, who tells the rubes anything? But that was the plan. They all proceeded on the, that assumption. And they put just enough pressure on the system, along with the Russians, along with Cambridge, along with James Comey, to tip the election. And along with an awful lot of white privilege. Yes. And people thinking, well, it's not going to affect me. Along with Matthew Dowd saying, you know, yeah. if the corrupt duopoly is really the problem here. I urge everyone to piss your vote away and vote green or whatever. Right, right. All right. of those things added up just enough to tip the election to the worst person imaginable for the job. And now they're doing exactly what they did after the Bush administration collapsed because the Trump administration came pre-disastered. Right. You knew right. what the fucking thing was going to be before it ever started. The Bush administration, they had to you know, beat cheeks the hell away from all the nice things they'd said about George Bush after it became clear that he was a nightmare. But, mm -hmm. but Trump, they have to pretend, I don't know, that the last two years never happened or the Republican right. Party didn't pre-exist the trip down the escalator or whatever. And that's what you're seeing in the media right now. This incredible all out, all hands on deck effort to protect their fucking jobs. Yep. Because if it ever gets out that they, they were playing, they were gaming the system for ratings that, that they were all pals with Donald Trump, that yeah. liberals have been right about the Republican party since the dawn of time. They're all out of a job. And the entire industry collapses, and they cannot permit that to happen. They would much rather see the country collapse than to see their ratings drop. Mm -hmm. That's just mm -hmm. that's the fact, Jack. So, speaking of people who are casualties, if you can call them that, of this uh, the, the arrival of Donald Trump on the scene, mm -hmm. uh, I hear that Paul Ryan has decided to quit his job to spend more time in Gulch Gulch. Can yeah, he's just the ghost of Ayn Rand. Apparently, he's already got job offers from oh, the sure banking yes. industry. So, you know, I, I'm, and, I, and, and he'll be able to retire at 50. Sure. Hey, he's a soulless, um, zombie eyed uh, granny starver, which mm -hmm. uh, hat tip Charlie Pierce for that. And there's always room in the corner office in some Koch Brothers subsidiary for mm -hmm. scum like that. There's always room for that. And you know what? The rehabilitation tour, the Paul Ryan, the noble man who fell afoul of an evil force. Uh, he's just a numbers guy, blue gal. He's just uh -huh. a family guy. He just loves his guy. You know what? I'm sorry if you think you've spent time away from your family, but you have a job where you work basically three days a week, four months a year. And if you can't yep. figure out how to spend more time with your family when you have the easiest job in America, which is being a Republican congressman in a Republican Congress that does absolutely nothing, then in a maybe, you're, district. maybe yep. you're doing parenting wrong. Yep. And so we bid you farewell, Paul Ryan, but not for long. Because you'll be back on the Sunday shows, and you're, you will be Newt Gingrich back into respectability before you can blink an eye. 
And mm-hmm. I pre- absolutely, I, that's a mortal lock. Paul Ryan is not going away. Paul Ryan yep. is going through the revolving door. And he'll land. He'll land right on the middle. He'll land on Meet the Press, and he'll be. He'll write a book. He'll write. Yeah. He'll be on Meet the Press. And, I will yeah. love him and love him. And then he'll grudgingly give up the fact. I just. I did. I wanted what was best for the country. And if mm-hmm. I made mistakes, mm-hmm. you know, I did them for the good of the country. Yeah, and right. you can see it coming. Um, yeah. Next up, TPP goes out. TPP goes in. <laughs> you can't explain that. How much of a fine? Is the United States going to have to pay for this? Oh, I think they need some heads on a on a spike. On a platter. Um, yep. Whatever you happen to think of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, I happen to right. think that the United States being a Pacific power needs to be deeply involved in the Pacific trade. Um, any Pacific trade agreement has to have the United States smack in the middle of it because a whole bunch of our economy depends on doing that. Right. And but- however you stand on that... Donald Trump ran, ran on TPP is the worst thing that any human had ever done. The it's, a worst disaster, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's a, yeah. You know what it was? Yeah. It was rape. Yeah, it was rape. It was rape. It was. And, and look, trade agreements, I am not an expert on trade. Nope. I I know nope. how how involved negotiating these trade agreements is. I know that they hurt American labor to a great extent. You know, we need we need to be more international to make a minimum wage for all workers across the world, yes. in my personal opinion, unionize everyone around the world and level the playing field that way to raise all boats rather yes. than, uh, you know, just continually allow uh, in corporations to move jobs to the cheapest most abusive place in the world. Well, we should have a national minimum wage and we should have environmental international standards. International minimum wage. Yeah. International. And and that's why I'm a globalist is yeah. not I because it. I want to th- just get rich off of exploiting people. I'm a globalist because I think each individual person in the world has value and we need to value that. And the United States does not deserve, quote unquote, Every high-paying manufacturing job in the world. No, you know, you know who uh, has a really good manufacturing economy. Germany does. Yeah, Germany has figured out how to do this, and Germany has figured out how to do it without pissing off the rest of the planet. Um, but here's what I do know about negotiations: I couldn't negotiate a trade deal. You don't want me there at the table. I don't know what all the issues are, but I do know this: if you're not at the table, you are on the menu. Yeah. And yep. when we decided we didn't want to be at the table, we want to just withdraw completely, fuck the rest of the world. We're going to Brexit our ass away from, you know, half of the planet. China was happy to take over yeah. for us. Absolutely. Yep. And you knew there was going to be a price to pay. The only people who didn't realize there was going to be a price to pay and it would be hefty are the fucking idiots who voted for Donald Trump, are the right. farmers and factory workers who decided that this guy was such a keen negotiator that he was going to go out and get him a better deal. Mm-hmm. And now farmers in Illinois are going, what the hell are you doing, man? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you're hitting us with steel tariffs, which is going to screw up our production. You're hitting us with soy. We're getting soybean tariffs from China. Thank you very much. What the hell's your problem? And it's, it's like, no, don't worry about it. It's going to be great. In the end, it's going to be great. No, in the end, it'll be great for you. Right. You will profit immensely from your looting of the federal government. The fact that these guys were dumb enough to vote for you, I'm really sorry for them. I feel it should be my job to protect them from hurting themselves any further by voting Republican for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's some, there's some late breaking news. Apparently uh, Michael Cohen is in fact under criminal investigation. Uh Uh-huh. So that's exciting, isn't it? Yes, that is exciting. Not unexpected, but darn exciting. Uh, Would you like to proceed with uh, a little news about Steve Bannon that we'd all like to share with the rest Uh, of the class? Steve Bannon just keeps cropping up. (laughs) <laughs> like uh, <laughs> on the phone with Donald Trump, you know, Donald Trump doesn't ever let anybody fully go. No. And um, he's working. He's working behind he, the yeah, scenes. He, he is colluding, Driftglass. He is colluding with Fox News and colluding with uh, conservative media mm-hmm. to undermine Robert Mueller's probe. It is, as uh, T-Pain said on Twitter, it is the textbook definition of conspiring to obstruct justice. Yes, it is literally what they're. That's literally the, on the what they're head. doing. Yes, and when the White House calls Sean Hannity and directors and producers at Fox News and says, "And now we need to say things that will get Rod Rosenstein fired," right? And then they go off and do that. And that is a conspiracy and to President, obstruct justice. And then President Stupid gets on Twitter and says, "Watch 
Laura no, Ingram watch tonight. Sean Hannity. Watch, watch Sean Hannity tonight. It's going to be great. It's you know it, it. They don't know how to do a conspiracy, and it's it's kind of like well, they all they won everything. So yeah. the theory is nobody can nobody can tell us no because we're in charge of everything. So right. let's why well, bother? Nobody can tell us no because free speech and freedom of the press. But if a subject of a criminal investigation has called you Ruh-roh. and given you a script to read on the air yes. in order to influence public opinion against the investigator, mm-hmm. I think there's a case to be made for obstruction of justice on Fox News. There's there's a word for that, Blue Gal. It's called Epsteining. Epsteining. I can't Epsteining. do it as well. You know, I can't talk too much about Paul Epstein, but I do know <laughs> he's got a lot to say about the great man Donald Trump and the bad people who are against Donald Trump. And that is Boris Epstein on Sinclair Broadcasting every fucking day in America. And there's a uh, lawsuit it's... going on about that now, too. Yeah. So people, uh, James, some apparently... people are bravely quitting Sinclair stations, and yes. I'm proud of them. I, I want to head up. Too. Proud of them. All they're, right. They're all getting podcasts, Blue Gal, so it's what good news, what bad news. Yeah. Um, and yeah. and now the Republican National Committee, yes. which has had a very busy day. I don't know if you know about this, Strip Glass. They're so busy, yes. They're very busy. They pr- produced uh, LyingComey.com, but mm-hmm. now they've lost like their third... Uh, treasurer or third uh, fundraising person in a year. Really? They had Michael Cohen. Yep. Uh, they had the guy who um, was caught with sexual harassment all over his hands. Oh, yeah. Got that stink on his hands. And yeah. now Michael Cohen apparently negotiated a $1.6 million deal for a Playboy Playmate who had an affair with the current one who resigned today. Yeah. Because uh, she got abortion. Uh-huh. And... <laughs> I got to tell you, <laughs> I'm sorry. David Frum tweeted this morning. Uh-huh. Did you see David it. Frum's I, I, tweet? I absolutely saw it. And I just, I, they, I re- He got I an email from, an, from a large donor in the Republican Party saying, a, no, a ra- abortion. A rabid pro-life donor. Pro-life donor saying, no, nope, doesn't make any difference. Yeah, you know, that's no big deal. So what if not, he paid for an abortion with his Playboy Playmate mistress? It's not, it's not relevant to the public discourse. Not From relevant, hardcore... not disqualifying. Not disqualifying right. at all. No, right. not disqualifying. Right. These guys are getting so caught well, in, uh, in, in their past history. I want to talk for a minute about a uh, interview that um, a very Irish congressman from New York, I want to get his name right. It's like Sean, <laughs> hold on, I'm going to look him up. Maloney. Have you heard of Maloney? No. Sean Patrick Maloney. <laughs> I do. I, I appreciate that he's Sean Patrick Maloney because he's very scrappy. He's a Democratic congressman from New York, and he's on Tucker Carlson last night. And Tucker Carlson wants to make the argument that, get this, Drift Glass, the president's sex life is nobody's business. Nobody's business. <laughs> nobody's business. And by the way, this, this Mueller investigation has gone ent- on entirely too long. And has come up with nothing. Mm-hmm. And so Sean Patrick Maloney, who, if this was a bar fight, I, you would need a mop to clean up <laughs> Tucker Carlson. Because the first thing Sean Patrick Maloney says is, I don't care about Stormy Daniels. I don't care about the president's sex life. Just don't care. Don't want to talk about it. Don't care. Don't think it matters. Don't care. I just want to talk about Mueller. And, and then he said, uh, I think... I think Mueller's done okay because he's gotten 22 indictments, 13 Russians, 100 felonies. And I just want a bipartisan consensus on letting this investigation do its work. And Carlson just looks like people aren't supposed to know that here. Shut up. This is, I was told there'd be no math on this show. He's, yes. and, and then he reminded Fox News viewers who had never been told this before uh, Comey's, or, excuse me, Mueller's been at this for less than a year. <laughs> right. Because on Fox World, you know, this has been going on since 1967. We you think know, it's, it's just, time to stop. Time to stop it. Stop it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, no, that's, no, no, no. I want, I want to finish this. Yeah. So, so, and the, Maloney had an opportunity to say that twice. 22 indictments, 13 Russians, 100 felonies, Tucker. And Tucker's like, all right, all right. But look, the point is, we saw this week federal agents basically break into the office of the president's lawyer. Don't you have a problem with that? 
And Sean Patrick Maloney said, uh, Tucker, I think when you say break in, you mean execute a legal warrant. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they came. No, Tucker said, no, they came in by force and they weren't welcome. Emily said, yeah, yeah that's what people do when they execute a search warrant, Tucker. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm, I'm aware of that, says Tucker Carls. <laughs> and Molly says, oh, and by the way, it's called due process. Yeah, I'm aware of it. But is it a good thing? <laughs> and so at the end of the interview, uh, Maloney Again, this is was the second time he said 22 indictments. You know, he's got a bunch of indictments. And Carlson says, OK, I'm with that. Let's roll it up and get to the business of running the country. Yeah. <laughs> and Maloney says, and now, no, R- Maloney says, L- you know, a bunch of indictments as part of running the country. And he says, oh, sure. I feel a lot safer now that Paul Manafort's in jail. Thank you very much. And now panda sex. <laughs> now panda sex exactly yeah. no you know what it was after that i didn't keep that in my clip but the next part was and now we have mark stein yeah of course we do. <laughs> of course we do of course we do <laughs> to talk about what a criminal robert Mueller is you know well, well uh, it's and it's it'll go in one ear and out you know yeah, their ass right, it, right, it doesn't right. affect that and that, but that's, but that's how the thing you about- do it i did want to applaud oh, yeah. sean patrick maloney your grandmother's proud of you, Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your grandma's proud of you, Sean. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. Gonna go, Sean. But the 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 point about David Frum, for example. Yes, yes. Um, it it what I told him was, of course, on Twitter, and and that's not going to elicit a response. Was welcome to what it's like to be a liberal. Yeah. Thir- over the last thirty years, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't yeah. matter. The facts are irrelevant. The facts don't matter. The fact that you you swore on on the lives of your children and a stack of Bibles that abortion is murder on Monday and on Tuesday you say it's completely irrelevant when one of my people does it because blah 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 America and that your brain doesn't fucking explode when you do that that that's just normal when you're a Republican that's what it's been like David being a Democrat being a liberal as you people have told us that the problem is you don't meet us halfway you don't compromise with us enough you don't you don't negotiate with us you don't see our point of view your point of view david the point of view of your party and your movement is 1984 it's orwellian there is no point of view there there's just a bunch of bumper stickers rattling around in a big empty skull and that skull manifests itself every now and then as tucker carlson yeah. who is yeah. not ready no, you're absolutely for right. anyone who arrives on that with facts on hand cuz that's not how we do shit here we sit around jerking off, complaining about the the de- the devil and the Democrats and, and Robert Mueller, and we have a big yarn board with the giant <laughs> Whitey Bulger Robert Mueller Seriously? conspiracy layout. Yep. Yep. And that's what the morons who watch Fox News need every night to get them to sleep because reality is closing in on them, and we have to find an exit strategy. And that exit strategy uh, apparently doesn't involve Michael Cohen. Because he made tapes. Yeah. Oh, and and it was yeah. a beautiful moment on Lawrence uh, with the discovery that there were tapes and Michael Avenatti. Uh, yeah. Speaking of people who've had the locks changed on them, it's not just Michael Cohen. I I, I regret to confess that to looking up Michael Avenatti's marital history and his wife locked him out of the house and changed the locks too. It happens with busy lawyers. Let me tell you. Yes, um, well, it happens in the best, the of, best family. of family. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, Michael Avenatti was was standing by on the Lawrence show when Lawrence said, uh, and it turns out that Michael Cohen has taped conversations and Lawrence just kind of does a double take and says, oh, I wish I had a camera on Michael Avenatti right now. <laughs> when, when he what? heard that, it's like, oh, this is such a game changer. This is so bad. I really thought things were bad when, when seven days ago, and that, I mean, everyone is saying this, but Lawrence said, really, it was only seven days ago that Donald Trump was yeah, on Air Force One saying, talk to my lawyer. You know, I thought that mm-hmm. was the end of it. I thought, okay, we are now at peak stupidity when it comes to lawyer-client relationships. But no, there are, t- no. Lordy, there are tapes. <laughs> well, and as we said, they they got into Avi's stash. Yes, they did. Oh well, we should explain um, that. Not everyone has watched uh, Ray Donovan. Ray Donovan is a fixer. Is a fixer, um, and and that has been in the news quite a bit this week because this is what 
Michael Cohen calls himself, yeah, which is I'm your Ray Donovan, Ray Donovan, you know, right, right. He's not. He's Bunchy Donovan. He's Bunchy Donovan. And Bunchy he's is the, the stupid, slightly uh, mentally defective brother of Ray Donovan. Been, who's been punched in the head yeah. several times too many. Yeah. yeah. I can't, don't know what to do, Ray. I don't know what to do, yeah, Ray. Right, right. And he's a good guy. I, I mean, you know. He's a good guy. Bunchy's a but good guy. But He's trying to keep Bunchy out of the conversation because Bunchy will fuck it up yes. no matter what he does. Yeah, poor Bunchy. And that's Michael <laughs> Cohen. Michael Cohen thinks Ray Donovan, but he thinks he's, you know, Tom, what's his name? Yeah, from, uh, from Godfather. Godfather, he's right. Tom Hagen, right, no, he's not. he's not. So in the show, as a fixer, uh, Ray has a crew that he works with, and they keep bits of evidence. They keep a whole the, for, storage unit full of evidence. Full of evidence. Right. Because <laughs> that's the leverage on the clients that they, they worked for and done dirt on. Right. They have body parts and murder weapons and <laughs> cell phones. With a a billion cell in phones, a, yep. Yeah. In a garage with a lock on the door. Mm-hmm. That's the garage the FBI broke into. Yes, it is. And that's why it's not, it can't just be uh, Trump mm-hmm. and Cohen. There's a whole bunch of people shitting themselves tonight because if, if, if it's if the measure is uh, when the team goes in, the taint team, which is an adorable <laughs> that, goes in and, and says, this is attorney clients. Nobody should see this. This is a crime. Someone should see right. this. And, and it's separate from the investigators. It's separate from the rest of the right. FBI. It, and they do not talk to each other. They separate yeah, but- out the, the data and the, the evidence based on what is admissible and what is not. And they then they give to the investigators what they're allowed to look at. It's and attorney client serious. privilege doesn't cover does attorney client privilege doesn't cover conspiring with your lawyer to commit or hide a right. crime. Right. Even and if that crime what, is something that everybody usually looks the other way, like campaign finance. Right. Right. I mean, this is it's something still, that came up on on uh, Chris Hayes this week. Uh, uh, Chris Hayes, by the way, I want to applaud Chris Hayes because his show and maybe it's just the times we live in. But I'm feeling those same vibes that I felt when we were watching the morning Saturday morning show. He used. Yeah, to. it's getting a lot more. He's getting a lot more juice he's in there. Having his, he's having. He's having. He's yeah. having really smart people on, who, yeah. who are worthy of our time, yeah. and uh, I, I am impressed by that. Um, you know who he hasn't had on in a long time? Who? Ben oh Dominic. well, you know Ben busy with his <laughs> wife, so you know. Yeah, Cindy. McKay. Yeah, Ben's busy. Or, and Ben, Ben was trending Cindy. on Twitter this week. Uh huh. Because he, he's still not talking about who funds the Federalists, right? Because the Federalists is turned into a a little hot box mini Breitbart uh, live factory, yeah. which anybody who ever watched or listened or paid any attention to the career arc of Ben Dominich could have told you, and some of us did. Yeah. And now people are like, well, where are you getting all this money from? Who's funding you? Because his funding sources were from, in the past, a fake uh, awards factory that was set up just to distribute wingnut welfare checks, a hack shop in Illinois that is climate denial, uh, foreign governments that he wrote lies for and got caught doing, uh, the people who hired him at the Washington Post, I believe, for one day. He wrote lies for foreign governments. That's right. I I have forgotten about that. Oh, yeah. And plagiarized. And he played and he got fired for plagiarism after like one day at the Washington Post. So he's got that on his resume. So he's just a bad, bad hombre. (laughs) He's just a bad dude. (laughs) And has always been, except he's untouchable, except he's a friend of a friend. So he gets to go on television and he gets to get on, on, on the radio and he gets to have money put in his pocket to produce this horrible shit. And he gets to marry into the McCain, the McCain family. Yeah, Megan McCain, not get. Cindy. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, Drift Class, um, I, I have a feeling that as stupid Watergate speeds up, yeah. um, we're, our emotions are going to be uh, in a bit of turmoil. I know that. And true. I felt that way when Scooter Libby was, when I heard the news that Scooter Libby was pardoned and we were, you know, hearing that Rod Rosenstein was basically standing by to be fired. And we don't know if that's going to happen this afternoon or not. We're this, yeah. right now it's three twenty one PM central time on Friday, on the, Friday 13th, the 13th. So. so we don't know, but um, I'm wearing a little bracelet that I got from um, our friends that did our contest for us. Uh, uh-huh. And it says on it, not today, Satan. <laughs> yeah. And I yep. just want to remind everybody of that. Um, that the winds and the waves are uh, going to be around, but there's also a still small voice of truth, and that's where the real power lies. 
So uh, God is not in the wind. God is not in the waves. God is in the still small voice of truth. And that doesn't mean we don't yeah. go out and march the hell out of this thing when it happens. No. And scream no. our heads off. But it means that inside, uh, it, take care of yourselves, folks, because I, I get yeah. nauseous sometimes when I when the Scooter Libby thing happens this afternoon. I For about half an hour, I was really having a hard time figuring out whether I needed to go throw up because this is my country and things are right. happening that are harming this country and it hurts. Mm -hmm. And it's not, first of all, I had to remember, okay, it's not just me that has to deal with this. This is not like, mm -hmm. you know, if uh, I break a cup in the sink, oh yeah, I do have to clean that up. That is my thing. And I just have to do this. This is millions and millions of Americans wanting this to stop. And so, right we're we're not you're not alone uh and well and the thing that makes it so mm -hmm. hard sometimes is that if you analogize it to a bonfire mm -hmm. to seeing a, a beloved building on a, an art museum or um a warehouse uh, the, the library of alexandria mm -hmm. let's say full of irreplaceable yep. books going up yep. in flames i'm still mad about that, realize, that. <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah. and who is it right. and who shouldn't be but and then you you look around the corner and it's not because it was struck right. by lightning. It's because the right. mob is yeah. burning it down. Yeah. And the mob mm -hmm. are your neighbors. A mob are people who should fucking mm -hmm. well know better. The mob are mindless people who've been trained brainwashed. to yep. burn down anything. Yeah, but brainwashed. And who think they're doing a great public service, who believe that burning down the Library of Alexandria is an act of patriotism, and who will not stop long enough to see the incredible long-term damage they're doing because right. they can't. There's no, there's no way for them to introspect anymore because if they actually looked inside, mm -hmm. they'd be horrified. And so they're just going to keep burning the library until we right. stop them. And that's what makes it so hard. It isn't a natural disaster. It isn't a meteor. It's our friends and neighbors. It's our family members who are burning down the library. And that's just incredibly heartbreaking. And they won't see reason. They won't wake up. So, um, and I do want to mention one thing before we pass through the, the fact that what happened in Syria mm -hmm, happened this mm -hmm. week. Yeah, Syria has been going on a very long time. I'm nowhere near smart enough to tell you what we should do or should not do in that, in that terif terrifying, broken down, awful nightmare of a country. Mm -hmm. I do know this. It is a whole hell of a lot more complex than the idiots at the Trump rallies right. would have you believe. And it, I want really smart people who, who have access to even smarter people. I want them to have Junior Dude on mm -hmm. speed dial when they have any question about how a country got formed. I want lots and lots of smart people working right. on these problems. And it's not I just Syria, it. it's bigger. Gaza, and it's not just Gaza, it's Yemen, and it's not just Yemen. It's the rest of the world. It's the rest of the places in Africa and around the world that are at war. It's yeah. places in South America where they don't have food. Change. It's it's all over. And we what we need are ambassadors in those countries with eyes and legs on the ground. We need the res to respect our diplomatic corps. Diplomacy is, you know, you just can't buy more bombs and fix the problem that way. Uh, you need people no. wanting to solve problems and treating other people around the world with dignity and respect. And... Uh, We've lost that because America, well, you MAGA, country, you know, yeah, okay. America. Well, you need, you need a country where public service is considered a, yeah. a virtuous thing and it's valued and it's compensated and it's respected and it's honored and you don't spend every goddamn day of your goddamn life tearing down the government generally. The government's always wrong, government's always bad, and you, and you elect a con man racist moron to appoint a bunch of people to tear it down. The exact photo negative opposite of what should be happening in this country yep. right now is the Trump administration. And that's the tragedy of it, because there are 60 million people in this country who think right. smart right. is bad. That, that no things is, is up. They like it. him because he's not a politician. And as I've said many times, I hope your teeth are drilled by somebody, not a dentist. And you know, this, week, this week, David Brooks blamed me yep. for MAGA. This is a different yeah. column because the reason he had not acknowledged that never Trump movement was a complete failure. Mm. That they're <laughs> never going to persuade them. They're never going to change their mind. But who did he put some of the blame on the, the condescension of people uh -huh. like me 
We uh -huh. created these people because we go around being smart and using big words, I guess, and noting the fact that stupid people shouldn't be allowed to run big, complicated machines. And that's just the way things should be. And apparently that's insulting and unpatriotic and un-American. Therefore, you and I, Blue Gal, caused Donald Trump. So right. congratulations. Right. Way to go. Okay. <laughs> um, Scott Pruitt, another fruit of the poison tree. Uh, apparently, one of the people he fired gave congressional investigators a whole long list of all the things Scott Pruitt was doing oh, that were unethical and wasteful and criminal. There's nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, Boys and Girls, is a rounding error this week. Um <laughs> You would, would you like to give people some good news about Tammy Duckworth? Tammy Duckworth had a baby girl. Baby and she girl. went to work that morning and she was tweeting that afternoon about Scott Pruitt and mm -hmm. writing a letter to the general accounting office about Scott Pruitt. And people were noting, wow, you had a baby and now you're writing about Scott Pruitt. And she said, working women get shit done. She didn't say shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> working no. women get things done. And uh, it's a baby girl. And it's a beautiful girl. And we love it. And we're so glad. We're waiting for a picture of that baby girl with a sweater. We got a picture on. of the baby girl with a certain sweater and a certain, sweater. certain wow. hat with a certain shape to it that makes little kitten ears for the baby. And yeah. it was knit by a certain person. Okay. I'm just saying. Apparently, Donald Trump wants to fire everyone <laughs> except the guy who cut the deal not to install sprinklers in the top floors of Trump Tower. Yeah, he doesn't want to fire him. Yeah. Nah, well, that, you know, the law done. the law says you don't have to do that. I, that the the uh silence of the media on the dead person in Trump mm -hmm. Tower yep. is uh pretty remarkable. Yeah. I mean, uh it it is uh older buildings do not require sprinkler systems, I guess because New York City says uh, landlords can't afford that, and they're probably yeah. right. And there's a housing crisis on Manhattan Island, so you know we're not going to mess everybody up by requiring sprinkler systems. But in the meantime, it means some people are going to die in a fire. Yep. Mm -hmm. Would you like to mention the fact this week was the week that Mark Zuckerberg sat down in front of? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, Senator. Senator, I'm sorry. Yes. Senator, yes, Senator. I'm sorry, Senator. Make, <laughs> make eye contact and okay. smile. Hold smile three seconds. Yeah. But but while we've mentioned Tammy Duckworth, let's also mention two other Illinois people. Uh -huh. Dick Durbin, yep. who asked Mark Zuckerberg, uh, you, you want everybody to know what hotel you stayed in last night? Uh, would you let everybody know who you've been texting this week by name? Uh -huh. And uh, got right to the point. Yeah. You know, it was, it was one of those moments. It's one of those moments where you just miss Al Franken so much because yes. he also would have put Mark Zuckerberg right through the. Give him, give him some time in the barrel, I think, is the word yeah, we're and, supposed and to use. Even people at, at Dick Durbin's advanced age can, yeah. compre <laughs> can comprehend what Normal Facebook people can comprehend that it, the assumption of privacy. Right. And, That's and all what, we're talking about. And what Facebook is and does and isn't and doesn't. I, I think it was Hal right. Sparks, probably Hal Sparks, or it might have been, uh, mm -hmm. been Chris Hayes, who said that Facebook is the most sophisticated surveillance system ever created. Yeah. Right. Designed, and, and here's the deal. Designed, most, to, designed to be the most sophisticated advertising machine ever created. Now, now here's here's something that I do have some experience with. Yes. Because I have worked for a company that used direct mail. I have worked for a company that uh, buys rent lists to mail to people without their permission, so to speak. Uh -huh. um, and and the deal is really, and, and this, is, this is fair, there is an assumption in our society that you're going to be advertised to. Yes. You can go yes. through lots of hoops and and invent names for yourself. I know you have a relative who did that. Yes. Uh, to figure out who's selling your name. And you can you can be really obsessive about that if you want to be. Mm -hmm. And you're, that's certainly within your rights to do so. But most people in an average day-to-day -day life trying to pay bills and spend time with their kids and make a meal and so forth do not care if your name is rented to a company that is similar to a company you've done business with and that you might be interested in that product. Right. If somebody wants to mail me an ad for a knitting magazine, I am not going to be either shocked or appalled. Yeah, that's why I, we have I a might not, home, honey. I'm right. I'm, I have a big bag for recycling. If I don't <laughs> want the product, yeah. I'll throw it away. Yeah. And But I totally understand that, for instance, because I give to donors choose, I right. assume I'm going to get... Uh, an envelope from March of Dimes. I assume I'm going to get an envelope from St. Joe's Hospital. I assume that certain charities are going to say, oh, that's a good hearted woman that wants to give money to, to kids, that kids charities and children's education charities are going to mail things well, to Can me. I just say one thing? Yeah. 
Uh, I'm still getting uh, emails from a certain uh, moving on-ish organization <laughs> uh, that uh, promised me once that I, I sent him a three dollars. Donald Trump would never win the election. So, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, just saying, you might okay. want to update and, your and marketing you know, material. If you subscribe to in these times, if you subscribe to Sojourners Magazine, uh, you can tell them do not rent my name, and they click the box there's a box on yeah, the computer yeah. that says no list rent right. and you they turn that off but it, there is an assumption with facebook users that when if i log on to facebook and i go look at yarn patterns and i join a club named knitting and i join a yarn factory website and so forth yes i'm gonna see some yarn ads on that page sure i don't have a problem with that no when facebook has paid officers sitting in the offices of Cambridge Analytica making sure that the data flow for elections is, in order to influence elections, it's going smoothly for them. Yes. I have a problem with that. When they have calibrated you down to your right. blood type and your You're, eye color. Right. And, and, you, every and sold it. And then, and then it has been stolen and you didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Uh that is that's when you've crossed the line. You have really crossed a line. So uh, the other thing I, I want to say about Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg is we totally forget how new all of this technology is yeah. and how new the Internet is. It's just a part of our everyday life. Mm -hmm. it, you and I were talking about this driving to um, St. Louis to get the girls from yep. their, their spring break. And using a nav um, in the car, you know, we have a button you can push and there's a map that comes up. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, a used, a it's a used car, but we have, it has a nav on it. And we're like, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> and and thinking, you know, some things are better than when we were kids. They you know, are. They really are. You can get but to. At the airport, yeah. but at the airport, I look around. I make it a point to look around in all public places. And yeah. the number of people who aren't looking at their phones. Yeah. Is is approaching zero. Approaching zero. Yeah, that's why and that's, I bring I'm a book or my the, knitting with me. Exactly. I bring I bring my book or a notepad with me to note down all the losers who are looking <laughs> at their phones. And well, but you and I have them. our phones with us because the girls, as soon as their plane lands, they text us. Of course. And no, it, I, you know, I have to go potty, so I'll be out after I go potty, and I got to do this. And can we go to this restaurant afterwards? And we're like. Well, let's look it up on our phones and see how close right. it is. And, oh, there's a map oh. and there's a, this. Things are better. And once it is that easy to do that, mm -hmm. uh, you take it for granted right away. Our children mm -hmm. cannot believe that you and I blogged at a time when there was no YouTube. Oh, yeah. What? How did you? How, how did you? How, what? No Instagram? No Insta No. No Snapchat? What? Mm -hmm. You know, this is new. And so regulating it you know this is the fact that uh silicon valley wants it to be the wild west and wants it to be unregulated and wants <laughs> to be libertarian and white male dominated and wants to be able to sexually harass their female employees or not have female employees uh right. you know all of that is uh is understandable i guess um, tough titties okay. is what I say. Yeah. Tough titties to you. We're, we're, yeah. The law is going, and and this is the thing with Hillary's emails. The the law mm -hmm. has not caught up with the technology, and uh, yeah. it needed to for security's sake. And and the Russians and a whole lot of other people are taking advantage of the newness of this and and certain right. generations' innocence about it. Uh, but we'll get there. We will get there. And and uh, we will regulate it and there will be pushback and then they will regulate it again and there will be pushback and we'll learn as we go on uh, the consequences of leaving some things alone and and bringing some things on board. So, but it's new. You want to, <laughs> it is. That's the thing. It's, it's new. And I used to teach yeah. this stuff. Yeah. And I've read, I've been reading science fiction since I was a, a wee, wee drift mm -hmm. class, a shot class, a little, little person. So it, this none of this actually surprises me. No, very much. well, you you uh, first this, of all, this, you know, you're kind of a somebody who likes to live in a hidey hole. <laughs> I do. I, well, no, let's put it this way: I I am not an early adopter when I don't have an entire P T mm -hmm. IT department to mm -hmm. play with. I used to have entire IT departments yes, to play with, so I had no problems. But I believe in properly technologizing each problem as it right, comes along. Right. I don't believe in giving it, doing more than I have to do to solve whatever the problem Correct. is at hand. And that works for me. I have, but 
the world is full of people who have decided that they're, they, in fact, we have Agora Fabulous, yep. one of our advertisers, <laughs> one of our fake advertisers, never leave never your leave home your because everything's digital and everything can be delivered to your door yes. by a drone. So why ever go out in the world right. ever again? That's, and that, believe it or not, is an Isaac Asimov story from, I think, 1945 mm -hmm. or 1954, mm -hmm. where people going outside into the world was considered a, a, a type of yeah. mental illness. Yeah. Because who would ever want to do well, that? Well, that, that was a story um, that uh, was written right before 1984 was written also. No, not 1984. Excuse me. Um, the other one, the book burning one. Fahrenheit, uh, Fahrenheit 451. 451. When he wrote, he wrote The Pedestrian. Do you remember? Yes. Oh, yeah. I, it's based a true on a true story. story. He uh, was pulled was over great. by the cops in Los Angeles for taking a walk. For walking. For walking. Because it was suspicious. What are you doing out here? What walking. Are you doing out here? And, and the cop couldn't yeah. arrest him or cite him for walking, but he did say, don't let me see you out here again. <laughs> yeah. And what did Ray Bradbury do? Went right home and wrote a story about, about it. it. Yep. 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 So. All right. Shall we move we on? Need to, we need to sum up. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's. I'll skip through a few things that everyone should know. James Comey, as everyone knows about that, there was a doorman at the Trump Tower who was paid 30 k uh, to not talk about the fact that Donald Trump might have fathered a child or out of might have aborted a child. We don't know. Or might have aborted. Yeah. Um, the company that owns the National Enquirer, speaking of payoffs, apparently paid Karen McDougal 150 k for a story it never there, published. It's called Catch and Kill. Yeah, there's a bigger part to that as well, which is the, woman, the person that Karen McDougal thought she was hiring as her attorney was actually working yeah, for Michael Cohen. And that is yeah. a uh, disbarring <laughs> event, you know, disbarrable incident. Yes. More, now here's more good news. Barack Obama is now more admired in every country on earth, more admired than Trump, except for Russia. Except for Russia. <laughs> except for Russia. And this one, I love this one. Wendy Vitter, you know, super duper Christian wife of diaper David Vitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, is up for a federal judgeship. She refuses to say whether she agreed with Brown versus Board of Education. Yep. And uh, she she tried to paint it in the context of, I don't want to talk about any court case. Yeah, and just, uh, no, most the Democrats on the committee said, yeah, that's disqualifying. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we think maybe Mike Pompeo is not going to be the Secretary of State because his, his confirmation hearings are not going very well. He's so, going to be confirmed because it's Republicans. Because yeah, well, Republicans. He's yeah, going to we'll, be confirmed. We'll, It'll be fifty one forty nine, but he's going to be confirmed. That's okay. Now, there's a few things that happened under the radar this week that I do want to mention. Sure. Um, Donald Trump ordered the Department of Justice to hire someone named Ezra Cohen Watnick, mm -hmm. who will be brought on board to advise Jeff Sessions on national security. You should know that Ezra Cohen Watnick was fired for showing Devin Nunez classified documents. Mm -hmm. So that's the government at work. Uh, Robert Mueller has asked to subpoena 35 witnesses for Paul Manafort's trial, which is kind of amazing, kind of wonderful. And, and Paul um, Manafort got a nice big signal today that he doesn't have to talk about nothing because Scooter Libby. Look what happened to Scooter Libby. He got pardoned. He got pardoned. Yeah, everybody's going to get pardoned. Everybody's going to get pardoned. pardoned. Which is something I, I tweeted the day after the election. Yep. The yep. day after. Yep. What happens when he pardons everybody? Yep. What do you do yep. then? Um I would like this heading to be my own forever Acapulco Umber or Acapulco Orange. Uh, this is the week that John Boehner went to work for Big Marijuana, baby. Yeah. yeah. So Not a, he's been working for Big Tobacco for a long time. And as we know, Big Tobacco has owned the trademarks on all the Acapulco gold marijuana uh, words for quite a while. So this, he goes, he goes where the green and the money is. So <laughs> okay. Legion. Legion is back to being amazing. I slept through the first episode. Yep, you've slept through the first episode, and this time you were you were in love I with was it again. Wide awake and totally on board. I do want to mention one last thing because we do have a bunch of stuff, but I do want to mention one more thing. David Smith, who's the chairman of Sinclair Broadcasting, mm -hmm. uh, met with Donald Trump to pitch a new pro Sinclair Broadcasting standard that would make him very happy. It is worth noting that during the 2016 campaign, David Smith told Donald Trump. We are here to deliver your message. Oh, God. Pretty exciting, eh? Shall we uh, talk about what we do each week, Blue Gal? Yes. Each week we post our Facebook page and website, an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Cass. Have you ever heard of the word stochastic? Yes, I have. Stochastic means random, random patterns. And our internet kitty this week is named Stochastic, or Cass for short. 
Cass is a four-month-old rescue kitty. He is their first cat. Oh and he has three main modes in his life as a four-month kitten. Uh, mode one is run around the house. Mode two is cry a lot if no one will pick him up. <laughs> yeah, I, I do that too. I'm gonna, not going to lie. Pick I me do up, that too. Pick me up. Pick me up. And number three, mode number three is purr real loud when somebody picks me up. Also me. I do that too. <laughs> so... Uh, there's a beautiful picture of Cass on our website and Facebook page. You will notice he has a bell on his collar. So I think there's actually a fourth mode there uh, uh-huh. that we aren't going to talk about. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's wearing a little bell to warn birds and squirrels and other critters uh, that Cass is random. <laughs> Cass is coming. He's coming and he, he's preceded by a bell. So he's a beautiful black kitty. He looks very much like... A uh, cousin to Barack Hussein, the Kenyan usurper, and Olive, the parkour kitty who live at our house. So uh, we we love our black cats. They are wonderful to adopt. They're, they're often not adopted. If you have an opportunity, we r- highly recommend, especially if you have children, to mm-hmm. adopt a black cat. They are the sweetest, most affectionate cats out there. They are. They really, really are wonderful cats to have in your home. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Let her on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, and it's getting into iced beverage time... It is. Buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. We've heard from a couple of listeners this week who are waiting for their income tax refund to come. We totally, totally understand that. And uh, we appreciate your donation so much uh, when you can get it to us. Thank you for that. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We've got PayPal postal address information, Patreon, and GoFundMe. Uh, Thank you to those who have contributed to the GoFundMe. We get that money right away, and that is going to pay about $3,000 worth of medical bills that I have. So we really appreciate your help on that. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? You know, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are indeed proven leakers, but they never lie. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.